here's part C from number six of the 2014 AP Calc AB exam. And in this piece of the problem, they finally want us to find a particular solution to this differential equation that has the ordered pair 0, 1 on the solution curve. So if we're going to solve a differential equation in AP Calc AB, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a way to separate the variables and then integrate each side. So to separate the variables here, uh, we can divide both sides by this set of parentheses and we can multiply both sides by dx and if we do those things we're gonna have cosine of x dx and then over here we're gonna have the dy divided by that set of parentheses we've separated our variables what we want to do next is we want to get rid of the differentials and we get rid of differentials by performing integrals so we're gonna do the integral of each side uh, the integral on the right is pretty easy integral on the right there's a formula for the integral of cosine or the antiderivative of cosine and that's sine uh, that is the side that I'm gonna include my constant of integration on we're gonna try to solve this for y right the way this problem is phrased implies that we're gonna have to solve our our equation for y once we integrate each side I'm gonna bring this off to the side here because there's quite a bit of work that we're gonna have to do in order to do this piece of the problem and I'm gonna kinda rewrite my expression within the integral like this we can't just say that the antiderivative of 1 over 3 minus y is natural log of y w if we just had a y here we could say natural log absolute value of y there's our antiderivative we're on our way but when you have an inner function in that place what you have to do when you're doing antiderivatives is you have to use the process of substitution so if you let u equal that denominator and then make that substitution you want to figure out what to replace the dy with. So I'm going to take the derivative of u with respect to y. Derivative of this is 0. The derivative of y of negative y is negative 1. What does du equal? Well, if I divide both sides by negative 1 and multiply both sides by dy, what I'm going to be able to put in place of dy is this expression. So I'm going to be able to put du over negative 1 or negative 1 du. I'm going to factor the negative out in front of the integral. So now we're able to do the antiderivative of this. Antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log of the absolute value of u. I'm going to backtrack. I'm not going to put a plus c on this side. If it was just this antiderivative I was after, I would do that. But because we're eventually going to solve for y and move all the constants over here with the constant that's on the side with x, uh, we can omit that one. I do need to for not forget about that negative out in front of the integral, though, uh, to back substitute and write down our final result we're gonna we're gonna have negative natural log of absolute value of 3 minus y is just gonna go back in place of the u since that's what u equals so I'm gonna bring this over here negative natural log absolute value of 3 minus y and what we want to do next is we want to try to solve this for y so to solve this for y I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 1 so that's gonna give me a negative sine of x now if I divide c by negative 1, I know I get negative c. I don't know what c is. I don't know what negative c is. I'm not going to complicate things by making the sign of, of a number I don't know uh, negative. I'm just going to leave it as a positive. We'll find that value in a few steps. So that'll leave me with the natural log of the absolute value of 3 minus y on the left. I need to get rid of the natural log at this point. So I'm going to exponentiate on each side. So when I exponentiate on this side, I'm going to have negative sine of x plus c in my exponent on a base e. And then the natural log and the natural exponential are going to cancel each other over here. And we're left with the absolute value of 3 minus y. I can't drop the absolute values yet. There is a way that I can manipulate the right side of this equation that lets me drop the absolute values. e to a power is only ever allowed to be positive. But I have addition in this exponent. If I rewrite this as e to the c times e to the negative sine of x, this is, you know, multiplication of like bases right here. When we multiply like bases, we add our exponents. So what I have written here is definitely equivalent to what we had previously. Why is this beneficial? Well, you can say, now e to the c can only be positive. e to the negative sine of x can only be positive. But if you say e to the c, e to some number is just some number. If you just arbitrarily call that number a and let that be the coefficient of the base e, 
what you've done at this point is you've given the right side of the equation a way to be negative. A could be negative, A could be positive. Because the right side of the equation has a way to be negative, we can now let the left side of the equation become negative as well and drop the absolute values. So that's a pretty s frequent sequence of steps to go through. It's, it's performed this way in most differential equations text, most AP calculus textbooks. Uh, kind of tricky. You do it a handful of times. Seems to make sense. We've definitely done that over the course of the year a handful of times. We want to continue to solve for y. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to do two things. I'm going to add the y to this side, and then I'm going to subtract this exponential from the 3. So I'm going to have 3 minus ae to the negative sine of x equals y. Now this is not a particular solution yet because we still have this constant that was originally a c, a constant of integration, still unsolved for. We need to solve for that constant of integration in order to consider this a particular solution. Right now we're just at a general solution. So how are we going to find that particular solution? Let's go back up and glance at that ordered pair real fast. I think it was 0, 1. Yep, when x is 0, the y value or the function value is 1. So what we want to do to figure out what a is, we want to put 1 in for y. We want to put 0 in for x. And if we do that, uh, sine of 0 is 0. Negative 0 is still 0. e to the 0 is 1 a times 1 is a. So what we end up with is 3 minus a equals 1. If I add the a to this side and subtract the 1 from the other side, I get that a equals 2. So what is my general what is my specific solution or particular solution? If I go back to my general solution line, which was right here, and rewrite it, y equals 3 minus what's the answer we got for a? We got 2, so we're just going to toss that in place of a. And here is your specific or particular solution.